beers. Okay, cool. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a go at calculating the amount of mass that's been lost during this nuclear reaction and how much energy has been gained. And first of all, if we have a look at the reaction here, the, the rules that we have to check are true, just to make sure we've got it right, is that all of the nucleon numbers on the left hand side have to be the same as the nucleon numbers on the right hand side, so 235 plus 1 is 236. Do we get the same 141 plus 92 plus 3 lots of 1? Yes. Comes out to the same. 92, is that the same as 54 and 38? Yes. Charge number. So making sure that nucleon number is conserved and making sure that charge number mm. is conserved. There are rules for writing down these nuclear reactions. So what we have to do now is work out how much mass has been lost during this nuclear reaction. So we're going to add together the mass of the neutron with the mass of the uranium, 235, and we're going to add together the three neutrons with the xenon and the strontium. And we're going to see what the difference between those masses is. So, working out the totals, we started with 236 point something and by the time the reaction finished we got 235 point something. If we work out the difference between those two numbers to work out how much energy was lost, we can see it's around about 0.2 U. The U is the atomic mass unit. And it's nice to use the U when we're doing these reactions because one U is about the same as one nucleon and so we know that we've got about right and we've got about 236 on both sides of the equation. We can tell our answer right but to do any maths with it about energy we're going to have to convert that into kilograms. So one U, one atomic mass unit is 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. That means that our mass deficit is And so we end up with a really, really small number, like 3 times 10 to the power of negative 28. But this is where we can use Einstein's equation to work out the energy equivalent of that amount of mass. Because we know in these nuclear reactions that mass is not conserved and energy is not conserved, but mass energy is. So like the, if we think about mass and energy as being interchangeable, that total amount is conserved. So if the mass has gone down, that means that energy must have been released. And that happens because we're moving from less stable to more stable nuclei. It's that change, that increase in stability that causes the mass to decrease and causes energy to be released. So we're going to calculate the energy. Energy is the change in mass times the speed of light squared, and the speed of light is yeah, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And so our energy is going to be that number times by 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. And so we get 2.82 about times 10 to the negative 11 joules. So it's a pretty small number. What we're going to have a go at now is knowing that that's how much energy we get from one uranium fissioning. We're going to work out how many uraniums we need per second to fission to run a one gigawatt power plant. And then we can work out how much uranium do we need to put into this power plant to run it for a year. One gigawatt, like one billion watts of energy. And so what we know is that power is energy per time, and so one gigawatt is the same as one gigajoule per second. One billion joules per second. 
And so if we're interested to know how many lots of that 2.8 2 times 10 to the negative 11 we need to make up 1 billion, we're going to go the number of uraniums that we need is going to be our 1 times 10 to the 9, that's our 1 gigawatt of energy, over the amount of energy that's released by each uranium, 2.82 times 10 to the negative 11. That's just going with that one big thing is made up from lots of little things. So if we want to know how many little things, we divide the big thing by the little thing to find out how many makes it up. And we get some enormous number. Dun, dun, dun. Anyone else get 3.5 times 10 to the power of 19 uranium atoms per second? So 3.5 times 10 to the power of 19 uranium atoms per second. Let's say we want to run this power plant for a year. How many, how many uranium atoms are we going to need to run this? I mean, that's how many we need for one second. How are we going to work that out for a year? Times 60, Ooh. times 60, times 24, times... 365. So in a year, we're going to need... A lot. So that's quite a lot, right? 1.12 times 10 to the power of 27 uranium atoms per year. So how much... We've got to go and dig up the desert, right? How many... What's the mass of uranium we have to feed into this thing to make it generate electricity for a year? So the mass is going to be equal to the number of uranium atoms that we want times by the mass of a, a uranium atom, uranium nucleus, right? And so the mass that we're going to need is 1.12 times 10 to the 27 nuclei per year times by the mass of a nucleus, 235 approximately, 235, but we have to convert that into kilograms, times 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27. What? How much desert have we got to dig up for this? And then work out how many kgs of uranium are there per square kilometre. Who got an answer? 430. <coughs> Four times. Four times. So about 436? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 436 kilograms. So. What? Like a wheelbarrow, a couple of wheelbarrows. Nice. No. So this is why, this is why people love fishing. Right, is that the density of energy, like 435 kilograms, and you can run a, it's like running a city for a year on a couple of wheelbarrows full of uranium. That's actually...